50k. Black mages, this is the this is dancing mad. Uh, this has been requested for <laughs> almost a year in the comment section of all of everything, Discord, Twitter, anything you any any way you can reach me. This has been requested, so I'm excited. One of my favorite songs that I've ever done, one of the favorite songs I've ever checked out in my life. And this is from the Black Mages, which of course I just also discovered here, Nabuo Matsu's like heavy metal band. So I'm expecting a lot of organs, some prog, and I'm curious how they managed to remove five minutes from the song. So let's just go. And thank you guys for 50k. This is Sounds identical. Need more caffeine. Ooh, drums. Pretty faithful so far. Oh, I was expecting that. <laughs> Oh shit, it's faster. <laughs> wow, it's like the same, but just more brutal. That sounds fun to learn on the guitar. I'm guessing that's actually Nobuo performing that. This. We don't give him enough credit for actually being to perform. Like, he's good as a performer too. I can't wait to hear Phase 4. Or the whole thing, really. <laughs> God. Oh. Boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, boom. Oh, damn. <laughs> this is so rhythmic. They're really not adding much, but it adds so much at the same time. It has like that carnival feel, right? Which is going with the whole Kepka theme. I see you, Black Mages. It kind of sounds like an Electric Light Orchestra song. 
<laughs> As I say that. Shout out Nabuo, dude. Mm, a dissonant chord. Oh, okay, so they just do like a, a phase once. Oh, how do they do this? If I had to rank my favorite phases, it'd be four, two, three, one. But that's impossible. But a lot of people like phase three a lot. If you listen on, on the left side, those bass notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your brain wants to hear the right side, the little lead. Just listen over here. Damn, dude, Naboo can play. We still have a while to go for the song, so I don't know how long this is going to go. Oof. Oh, the rotary organ. Holy shit. Ooh, snare drum. Records. <laughs> My chat is losing their mind. <laughs> Tell them how you feel, chat. Ah, oh, the palm muting. Oh! <laughs> oh, that snare drum is kicking my ass. The most gothic thing ever recorded. <laughs> Imagine hearing this during the castle in FF8. It's so faithful, like... They just added things, but they didn't really, like, take away anything. Need more coffee. I was expecting that. <laughs> Ooh. Fades. You're right. <laughs> How rude of me.
Oh, extended. Oh, they extended it for the solo? That guitar is crying, dude. Pentatonic scale? I know that scale. Oh my god, dude! I was not expecting a soulful guitar solo in this. It's like Carlos Santana's playing. Ah! <laughs> They're extending this so hard. That's what she said. I wasn't expecting a guitar solo at all. Oh! <laughs> Back to the beginning? Say the third time's a charm. <laughs> Holy crap. So, so, oh man. Okay, originally I was just gonna listen to it and then like edit in the, the afterthoughts later, but I mean, I have so much to say already. Um, <laughs> it's been a while since I've heard that song. Uh, from the moment I heard it, I didn't hear it for like six months. And then I heard it recently in the past couple months. And then I haven't heard it again. I feel like it's one of those that you have to kind of like savor and just put aside, put it in the freezer and come back. It's like ice cream. But, uh, okay. So first of all, it was extremely faithful, which I really like. It kind of reminded me of like the 14 version of the extreme where it's like super faithful to the original. They just enhanced it. Uh, now I'm not going to say which one's better or anything like that because that's kind of preposterous, but it's just another uh, another piece of the pie that we can all share. This is like a very cool version. I feel like this would get people like into metal, even if they don't listen to metal, because this was pretty metal. The first phase had all the little uh, the gallops, the, the triplets going on. Phase two sounded almost exactly the same, except uh, it pretty much every phase just had a little bit more metal in it. The third one was probably the most uh normal out of the out of all of them pour one out for kefka's oh yeah we didn't hear kefka's laugh oh yeah zero out of ten i didn't even i didn't even pay attention to that the chat just pointed that out uh i didn't even notice that <laughs> but the third phase was really cool because i noticed uh, nobuo is actually just performing you know and uh i, I guess i just never really like gave credit like the guy can actually like play and he's playing these live this is obviously not a live recording but he does play it live too and i mean that's impressive and then phase four <laughs> i mean i'll probably add more afterthoughts later i want to give this i want to i want to give this one like a really proper 
afterthought. So I'm going to give you like my live afterthoughts now and then later I'll add some more. The phase four was, it was approaching like the six minute time. And I'm like, there's still six more minutes left. Like what's going to happen here? And then they pull out this basically jam solo. You know, when you hear the word jamming, that literally just means like improvising. They just ride this uh, key or these chord changes or this chord progression, sorry. And they just kind of like let loose. And that's kind of what it sounded like to me. It sounded very free form. I don't think it was entirely improvised, but it sounded like they just kind of were flowing with it and kept some things here and some stuff. No, but it was just super expressive. The last thing I thought about in Dancing Mad was one, a guitar solo, and two, a soulful one. If you were to tell me that there would be a guitar solo, I would imagine it'd be more shreddy, and just, especially in phase four, <laughs> I would, you know, something just kind of all over the place. But, you know, now that I've heard the Black Mages a handful of times, maybe three or so times, I've noticed that they really are uh, meticulous with their guitar solos. They're really soulful and really impactful, and they really sound incredible like in front of the mix they're, they don't sound buried they don't sound too upfront they just kind of are like very very much there and it sounds so crisp and clear this is also a video from 2010 so this video is 10 12 years old <laughs> sorry math and it still sounded amazing so i think the biggest surprise for me and the biggest takeaway was obviously that guitar solo in phase four but in true musicianship fashion, you know, they have to end the song somehow. So I, no I noticed they went back to phase one, which is really, really cool. Like they kind of sandwiched the whole song into this spherical space, sp space, space, spherical space. So it kind of felt like a loop that way. I never really experienced dancing mad that way. And then it ended with the, the tolls, which I thought was a nice touch because tolls are usually a sign of uh, someone's passing, someone's dead or about to be dead. And, you know, I think that's kind of fair considering Kefka's like, final boss and pretty hard. Apparently, I'm not really sure. Overall, it was just a really amazing arrangement. And there's still more. There's still the Distant Worlds one. But I think they just all have their own identity. The original sounds incredible for its time and its limitations and how long it was. The Final Fantasy XIV version is, is a crazy um, rendition as well. I really liked the bass and drums in that one. That one was really like mind blowing. And then this one was just like, I feel like this was just like a gift to the, to the fans. I think anything the Black Mages does is just a gift to the fans. And you know, it's just, that's, that's just what it felt like. As far as the Distant Worlds one, I'm actually looking forward to that. I don't know if I'll do that today, but um, I don't know. There's not much that else that could be said about Dancing Mad besides the fact that it's such an impressive composition that withstands the test of time. No matter how you cover it, what instruments, whatever, it's going to sound good. Like it's, it's like an impossible song to mess up. You know, you can play this on a harp a kazoo someone out there please do a cover on the kazoo bells it doesn't matter like it's just it's just so iconic and all four phases and i should mention also <laughs> that songs like this are kind of a gateway you know not not this one in particular but the song dancing mad as a whole you know i'm sure out of the millions of people that have heard it you know a couple hundred thousand got into classical music. They probably would have never given it a shot. So they got into Bach and, you know, Mozart and Vivaldi, stuff like that. Just to give it a shot, you know, because it sounds so... Classical music is very odd. But this kind of... You know, it's, it's like its own version of classical, but it's definitely still like 90% classical. But it is kind of like this with this whole like non-structured way of writing is just kind of like this piece and then it kind of like ends and then it goes into this next piece like if you notice all like almost all classical songs are like that like furry lease one of the most famous classical songs of all time 
sounds all cool like that. And then the second half, you're just like, what? Doesn't even sound like the same song anymore. So it is a little uh, jarring. But uh, that'll be it. So that's my impression of the Black Mages Dancing Mad version. Thank you. And here's to... I should just check out a Dancing Mad version every year. <laughs> or every 50k. But uh, there's still more to go. And I'm looking forward to it. I wonder if anything will top this one though. Because this is like... It's pretty high up there. Anywho. Thanks.